Hi Year 8 and welcome to your lesson 3 and your final lesson of music at CHSG which is quite sad, uh, very sad to be doing this over uh, YouTube but thank you so much for your support and hard work during the past two years. Today you're going to be looking at film music and what the differences between film music, opera and musicals are. Please make sure that you have your booklet with you, a pen, potentially a pencil as well but please make sure that those phones and distractions are out of the way. So today our lesson title, is there much difference between film music and opera? We're going to be looking at that, so you're going to develop an understanding of the role of the composer and about a number of film composers. I want you to be able to consolidate your learning from the whole topic and to listen to a piece from an opera. As you'll do now, I'd like you to take seven minutes overall on this task. Think about all that you've discovered in this topic about film music and I'd like you to create a mind map with all that information with as much as you can. If you're starting to struggle after about four minutes, why not go back and have a look at some of the other videos? Flick back and have a look at your notes. Pause the video now and time yourself. Give yourself seven minutes for this do now. Just a reminder that a leitmotif is a frequently recurring short melodic or harmonic idea which is associated with a character, event, concept, idea, object or situation which can be used directly or indirectly to remind us that somebody's on stage. We will be looking at leitmotif later on in the lesson to do with opera so it's, that's the reason that I'm bringing that back in. So what does a composer do? Give yourself just 30 seconds to think about, do you know what a composer actually does? A composer is somebody who writes the music for either a film, an opera, a musical, a television series, an advert. It's somebody who writes music for a living and that's how they make their money. Some examples include Mozart, John Williams, Hans Zimmer, Bach, Beethoven, Wagner, Strauss, Verdi, the list goes on and on. But does it change if you're composing for film or for stage? Let's take a look. So film music. Sorry, there's quite a lot of information on this page, so I will be talking through it. But if you feel free, to, feel free to pause it if you wish. Film music is used to create an atmosphere, so it's to sync what is going on on screen with what the emotions that you should be feeling, okay? And to create an iconic themes associated with a character. A film composer will often sit down and discuss the ideas for a film soundtrack way before any of the shots have been filmed. The composer will sit down with the, with the director and they will come up with some ideas and how they see the music accompanying the film. It's more of an accompaniment. You're not really meant to know that it's always there. So they will work on ideas and themes and they'll come back and they will see how they fit together and once the film has been filmed, once it's been shot in full, the composer will try out a number of different sections of music. They'll have a big bank of work that they can use and ideas that they can try with different things. It's all about getting the best bit of music for that section of the film. It's then recorded, usually by a uh, an orchestra live, and then added in in the editing process. Um, it's added in later. Now, opera. It all happens live. So it's sung live on stage with an orchestra accompanying and a conductor keeping everyone together. Remember, the conductor is the person that stands at the front with the stick and waves and keeps everybody in time. Opera is very visual. It's a combination of acting, singing, dancing, scenery, costumes, and therefore it has to be a, a big spectacle. They're often adapted plays, so they have a shorter story or synopsis, as it takes a lot longer to sing a line than to speak it. They're very big productions. Most of the time, musicians are combining the text or libretto, you will hear me say that word later on, and the musical score in a very theatrical setting. Musicals, very similar to opera and there are some crossovers. So if you are still struggling, I might actually recommend that you go back and watch some of the videos that I've done for year seven on musicals 
Musicals are sung live on stage with an orchestra or pit band accompanying and a conductor to keep everybody together. The reason that I say or a pit band is because sometimes it depends on what instruments are being used to accompany. If it's a rock musical, so if we think of something like We Will Rock You, many more electronic instruments, so a lot of use of guitars quite heavy on percussion. But if you think of something like Les Miserables, they often have a very orchestral setup, so they have a lot of strings, they have harps, they have French horns, they have trombones, they have trumpets, they have woodwind. Really worth having a look and seeing the differences. Often um, a musical composer will work with a lyricist or will also be a lyricist themselves. Stephen Schwartz sometimes writes his own lyrics to the text for the songs. There are a number of different types of songs in musicals. You can have action songs, character songs, ballads, comedy songs, production songs, rhythm songs, and I would advise you to go away and really look at what the differences are between them. But a musical must be catchy. It must have solo songs, it must have duets, it must have choruses and ensemble numbers. There is sometimes spoken dialogue, but not in every single one. There is often dance sequences and stage spectacles and magnificent costumes. It's quite a link between opera and musical. Pause the video now. Please make sure to be taking down some notes as we go through. Carrying on with step one in your booklet, I just thought it'd be interesting to go through some composers and a little bit about each of them. So I've got a composer from a film, from an, a, an opera and a musical. So John Williams was born in uh, 1932 on the 8th of February. He's won a number of awards and they're all listed there. I think that's fascinating to look at. He was influenced quite heavily by opera and Wagner, who we'll look at in a second, in his works. He uses leitmotifs, there's that word again, quite a lot. He composed films such as Star Wars, Harry Potter, Indiana Jones, Saving Private, Ra Pri Private Ryan, E.T. And it's estimated that he's worth about $100 million. R Richard Wagner, he now is somebody that influenced John Williams. He composed a number of operas, including The Hall of the Ring Cycle, which includes Die Valkyra, Tristan und Isolde, and The Flying Dutchman. He was born in May 1813, and he unfortunately died on the 13th of February 1883. And his full name was actually Wilhelm Richard Wagner. He's quite different. He wrote both the libretto, there's another key word for today, the text, and the music for each of the set works. He used leitmotifs to develop his works because his works and the music were very intense and quite characteristic to him. They're very long operas and therefore the use of leitmotifs made his life easier. You could identify who was coming onto stage or who was being spoken about because of the music that you heard. He would often compose for a full orchestra and sometimes his works include instruments that we don't even use today, including a Wagner horn. Do have a look at what that is. Now moving on to musicals, Andrew Lloyd Webber, he composed a number of musicals and he was born in 1948. He currently owns the London Palladium in London and he's trying to sort it so that we can get musicals back going since Covid. He's approximately worth about £820 million and has composed at least 21 musicals including Phantom of the Opera, Cats, Starlight Express, Evita, Jesus Christ Superstar, and soon he's meant to be releasing Cinderella. We'll see how quickly that one happens after Covid. He has turned his, ha his hand to composing for films as well, but with all that success comes quite a few awards. So he's won Tonys, he's won Olivier Awards, he's won Academy Awards, he's won Emmys, he's won Grammys, all for his work. He's also a Knight of the Realm, so he is actually Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber pretty cool. I pause the video now and add anything that you need to to your notes. Moving on then to some listening. I'd like you, using the link in the description box below, to listen to the overture from Magic Flute, which is written by Mozart. Now, you might say, Miss, we've not really looked at any Mozart, and I think that now would be a good time to. Really think about how you are going to do this. Are you going to talk to me about all the elements of music? Really think about how you're going to detail this. By now, year eight, we should be using these Italian terms. So we should be using allegro, moderato, adagio, 
we should be using forte, which remember means loud, piano, which means quiet, crescendo, which means gradually getting louder. We shouldn't just be putting, it was good. You really need to push yourselves. Think about the instruments that are in there. Pause the video now, listen to the Magic Flute Overture by Mozart, and write down your thoughts in full sentences. Now, the final task for you to do this lesson is I'd like you to create a poster on your favourite film. Now, you're going to have to do a little bit of research with this because ultimately I want to know about the music. So I want you to find out who composed the music for it. Are there any interesting information about the music or the composer? And key songs or pieces from the film? Make sure that you make this detailed and try to really think about all that you have learnt in this film music topic. End the video now and use the rest of the lesson time on activity 3.3 and 3.4. Thank you Year 8 for all that you have done over the past couple of years. It's been absolutely amazing and remember music departments are still always going to be around. Take care, have a lovely summer, speak soon, bye.